To help illustrate the use of arrays, we want to write a few basic functions, uh, things that we can uh, do with the arrays that will help you understand how you access them. So let's write a file. I'll call it arrayfunctions.scala. And inside of here, the first function that I want to write, I'm going to call fill array. Now, whenever you create an array, it's already filled with something. So in some ways, this, this uh, name is probably not quite appropriate. The idea is that we are setting all the values in the array to a particular value. So perhaps it should be called set array instead. Anyway, in order to make this work, we're going to write this as a recursive function. We need to know the array that we're going to set. and for our purposes, we're going to make this an array of ints. We need to know the value that we want to store inside of here, and that is going to be an int. And we're making this a recursive function. We need to have an index of where we're working in the array. So I'm going to call that i. Now this function is going to return unit because the only thing that it does is it mutates the array. From previous videos, you know that basically we either need to give back a value, or if we're not giving back a value, it's because we are doing some type of side effect. We're mutating either a value, or we're printing, or reading. In this case, we're mutating the array and putting the values in there. The way I want to write this is we're going to have the array be filled from the low end to the high end. So the idea is they would call with a value of, of i being 0 to start with. And then we will increment i for each step as we go. So we have to figure out what our base case is. Well, our base case is when you run out of values in the array. It's interesting to ask the question, what happens if you try to access an array outside of the bounds? So for example, if I make an array that has 1, 2, 3 inside of it, and then I try to get to element 100, which of course it doesn't have, only 0, 1, and 2 would be valid values here, you can see that we get an exception. So there's a new type of exception. We had previously seen things like number format exceptions. This is an array index out of bounds exception. Okay, so we want to avoid those because that would cause this to crash. Well, it turns out that if i is greater than or equal to the length of the array, we would get one of those errors. You can't index an array at its length because it's zero indexed. It starts at zero, so it goes to length minus one. So I only want to do this code if i is less than arr dot length. Okay. If it's less than length, I am going to store the value v at arr sub i, and then I am going to recurse to our next case. Same array, same value, but now at i plus 1. So we'll move on to the next index. So to test this out, we will, actually, I'm going to test this out in the REPL. Uh, we'll go ahead, OK, we'll, I'll write the code for it. So insert val arr equals an array. I really don't care, because I'm going to fill it. And then I could call fill array on that array, just to make it clear that the no names don't have to be the same. Nums, I want to set all of them to 99, and we're going to start at 0. Now, here's the reason why I started thinking of doing this inside of the REPL, is because it turns out that arrays don't print nicely. And so if I take this and I just run it, Well, 
it printed something, but it doesn't necessarily tell us whether or not the values that, that we wanted to store were actually there. So in this case, it might be more helpful to load in arrayfunctions.scala load and we have nums originally as 111 but we called the fill and you can see that now it has 99s inside of it. So fill array goes through and sets all the values in the array. Um, it's not the most useful of functions but it kind of shows you how you can use recursion for indexing and how we can have an integer index that we recurse on to get to all of the values in an array regardless of how long the array is.